Officers on the pursuit call, a suspect vehicle was last seen heading north near the power station. Containment will be set up ahead of his last known direction of travel. This call is still code 6. Handle on TAC 3. Alright guys, uh, so this video basically is pretty much going to be going over the wiring harness. So as I mentioned in my last update video, um, this car, I've had it for almost four years and got it from a complete roller and the wiring harness has been giving me nothing but problems. So today is the day I'm going to start the process of ripping the entire chassis harness out because I have a replacement on the way and it's not a replacement the OEM replacement it's going to be like you know race car style DIY build your own harness type of thing so I want everything that's OEM in here gone so all the way all the trunk looms and all that stuff I want that stuff gone I want this stuff everything under the dash everything inside the interior basically anything that's not the engine bay harness which is wiring specialties is getting taken out the car and I'm still gonna keep the harness so I can take the plugs off of it and make the new harness plug and play but outside of that there's no need for me to keep anything else from the original harness so I kind of already got started like a little bit yesterday and I didn't record taking the seats out and the uh, one of the back panels but I'm gonna record taking everything else out and my goal, because the actual fuse box slash relay box that I'm using isn't necessarily scheduled to be delivered till Friday. Today is Tuesday. So my goal is to kind of take everything out, but leave the harness connected to whatever it is connected to in the engine bay. That way, when I do get the harness or the new fuse box and stuff, I can kind of see what is going where and write everything accordingly because I've mapped out everything to work independently, but I want everything to still work with the wiring specialties. Uh, engine bay harness as it does right now. So the one with the starter is the one that I'm trying to figure out the most. I mean, the fuel pump is the one I'm trying to figure out the most. I think that the fuel pump and the starter get grounded no the fuel pump gets grounded by the ECU from what I remember the starter is just a matter of getting that signal to let the ECU let the the goal for today is to get rid of the interior <laughs> unfortunately I probably won't be using it going forward since I'm also going to be doing the cage so everything has got to come out these the B pillars and C pillars, this back panel, probably the headliner if I feel like it. I might say that for last. The A pillars as well. I'm gonna try and take out the seats. I'm gonna try and take out the dash. Basically everything inside the interior so that I can because I'm also doing the cage prep, so all this stuff's gotta come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up and start recording and we can go ahead and see what happens. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to take out the passenger side seat and I'm not going to record that. It's the same process, just on the other side. I'm trying to leave space for the camera to charge up. All right, guys, I kind of just went ahead and did a lot of stuff. Uh, the other camera is taking forever to charge, so I'm just going to wing it with this one and we're going to go from there. But uh, basically what we got going on is I got the carpet ripped out. I got both seats out, carpet ripped out. I took out the uh, center console thing housing the fuse box. I got this door panel off and I still got to do the other door panel over there. But I just wanted to stop and let you know how to take the door panel off if you don't know how to so take the door panel off. If you pop out this cover, well this screw hole is supposed to have that in it. So you're supposed to take that screw out, see how they line up. So 
whoever put this in first wrong did it wrong so you pop that out there's the other screw that goes in there which is not holding nothing in so this just comes out you're gonna have to disconnect your uh, master switch window switch and door locks and stuff like that in order to get this out I got that taken out um, and now it's just all of the well, that's loose. but now it's all the clips and stuff that are gonna be around the door I don't know if I can do this with one hand but I'm about to try it I typically start from the bottom this one's missing a clip but yeah they all pop out I think I got them all see how that's loose now you just want to pull it up and out up and out and there you go and then you might have any you know residual connections like speakers or something like that that may be connected up if you do unplug them before you get this all the way off but there you go so as you can see it is a absolute mess in here 100 percent guaranteed mess with that being said i did what i came here to do for today at least which was get the fuse box harness separated completely so i know it's a lot of jumble i know it's hard to look at honestly it would take too long to explain what is everything individually so i'm gonna just leave it at this this main harness all this is the fuse box harness that is the fuse box with the remains of it right there i had it wrapped in throughout the dash so it could be kind of tucked had to get it from under there i cut the wires that go to the headlights just because i'm probably going to wire up some new ones anyway and that was i feel like pulling stuff through the firewall um so all that stuff separate we got the dash off everything is cool the only thing that i've noticed so far i haven't went through it intricately but this was cut and it was a cut on this one as well and if i'm remembering correctly this goes to the starter and alternator systems so that would be a good indicator of why my alternator might not be charging um i don't know what else is messed up in there but hey that's just one problem it's gonna get rectified by taking all this out anyway so we're good to go on that the main purpose uh with this is to take out as much as i can without disconnecting everything just so i can see where things go i think i said that in the last clip but now i got a visual of it All right, guys, feel free to pause the video on any of these images. Uh, this is based on my research. I found what the OEM size of these connectors, all the wires represent, which helped me a lot with wiring up my new uh, fuse box and relay box. All right, so I have made some progress. I went ahead and cut this out, out and wired up, uh, well, not wired up anything, but just kind of sorted everything out. So these are the wires that are needed to keep the car starting, running, and driving like normal. These are all the other wires. So I kept the, the ones that's in black electric tape are the ones that are just not needed at all. The ones in this loom are for the AC and the ones in this loom are for the windshield wipers. So whenever I get that going, I can come back to these and make that happen. But these are the ones that I'm worried about right now to wire up and there's that. So that's that connector. All right, guys, just wanted to go ahead and update after everything. So you guys seen what the car looked like beforehand. I'm put a little pop up probably right here. Uh, and that's how it looked before. This is how it looks now. It's not completely done, but it is the wiring and everything like that is mostly done. I've tucked everything. I made my harness, the fuse box is mounted and everything like that. So that's the fuse box. I got this off eBay. It's a uh, the eBay listing for it was just somebody that pre-wires them. 
um, but this is a Busman uh, fuse slash relay box. It comes with five relay circuits, five non-relay circuits. And the way that this one works is you pretty much have this battery lead or the way he wired it up. You have this battery lead, this goes to battery power and that is what powers all your individual circuits. So this one stays hot at all times and everything else is where the relays are switch controlled and then the constant ones are constantly hot going out of this box. Then you have your ground, your ground grounds the switches, and then you have all your outputs. So the big wires over here are the relay outputs. I only have one that's active and that one's going to the fuel pump. I have this, this is your relay inputs. So this is the switch that controls the relays as I have none of the other ones hooked up. This white one is hooked up to a switch. And once this switch activates, it cuts that relay on, which sends the power to the fuel pump and the fuel pump does its thing. And then they have these, which are your outputs from the non-relay circuits. I only have one of those coming out, which is to this one. I made it just reuse one of the Nissan connectors, but it comes out to here and it goes into that uh, dash harness that I have tucked away over here. So it goes down into there. That red battery plus wire is where that constant is going to. It's a very small wire and it doesn't short the system or anything like that. <laughs> to explain why I'm not using the ECU output wire for the fuel pump is because from what I was, the description what I was given from Link and from Wiring Specialties is that the Link ECU outputs a low signal to the fuel pump relay to cut it on and the only way for it to work is to connect this switch to one side of the uh relay control take the ground off the ground and put it to power basically reversing the polarities for the circuit then it will work however the other thing with it is the relays would only need the relay it'll only work properly if the relays get power during ignition on and not constant power so with the fact that this battery wire is constantly powered by design of the fuse box before you know for a universal application the relay will always be on if i connect it up to the ecu i'm going to fix this in the future by connecting a big relay to this point this is the main point where all the batteries here this I was gonna I was planning on using this area to put a uh, circuit breaker <laughs> mounted right here, but I'm gonna mount the circuit breaker and the relay. It's gonna be like an 80 amp relay, so it'll come off the battery into the circuit breaker. Then that'll be the the fuse. It'll go into the 80 amp relay, which will be activated by ignition, and then that will power this box. And once it does that, I could wire the input up to the fuel pump output for the ECU and the fuel pump could be duty cycled again but for the time being I don't have that circuit breaker or that 80 amp relay so I'm gonna leave it to the switch for now um but that's pretty much it it's honestly not that difficult once you go through like I did research everything look at all the pinouts and everything like that it was just hard to find all this information in one source in a semi short video um so I'll drop links to all the videos that helped all the websites and stuff like that that helped me get to this point. If anybody wants to go check that stuff out, it'll be in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much where I am. This fuse box pre-built with the mounts and everything on eBay was like 170 bucks. Not bad, especially considering that the wiring specialties S14 chassis harness that matches all the stuff I need is like $2,000. So you buy that for almost 200 bucks, get some heat shrink, some sleeve, and you can reuse the wire from the old harness back there. And you can just make it for maybe 300 bucks. Um, the only other thing associated with it outside of tucking the wires and stuff is the gauge wires. I haven't wired up the gauge wires yet. So we got this stuff for the cluster. 
Uh, the orange is the check engine light. The yellow, I believe is the coolant light. And this one, or yellow is the coolant input, orange is check engine light. And then this blue and black one is for the tech. This white and red one already covered is coming off of that. But that's going to the gauge cluster as well. That's why it's cut here. And then the last one is this one over here, this yellow and blue one. I already covered this one because it comes off of that. That goes to the oil pressure. And all of those wires need to go to the gauge cluster. So let me show you real quick. And this will be the last thing I'll show you on the inside before starting it up. But on the gauge cluster, if you flip it over, I've already cut those wires. So this one is for the alternator. This one is for the oil light. This one is for the tech, and this is the check engine. Um, and then I'm missing one for the coolant. The coolant one I haven't cut because there's two yellow wires. I believe it's this one for the coolant light, but I just want to be 100% sure before I cut it. So there's that, but yeah, I'm gonna wire these directly to the ones over there and make a harness to go across see if the gauge works and that'll be the next clip after this one starts Here we go. gauge doesn't work because it's not wired up but that pretty much sums it up those are the only inputs and outputs you need to get your car running and driving if you have a standalone ecu i'll put that in there if you still oem 100 oem might be a little bit different. You might want to look at all the stuff I put in the description to kind of tweak it for yours. But yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead, cut it back off. And since this power, since this gets its power from the ignition, if you turn the key off, that dies too. And then that takes care of that. So let's cut back to when I rewire those and then we'll test to see if that works. I mean, as you can see, the car is, I just started it. This is the first time I've really started it today. So the temperature gauge is at the bottom because it's probably nowhere near normal operating temperature. But as you can see, the battery light is on. The alternator is charging. You can probably hear the squeaking. The RPM gauge is working. Uh, the tack is not gonna work just because I have the CD09. If you need, if you're still using the OEM stuff, then those two wires that I said were for the speed sensor, those are the two wires you use for the tack. Uh, the next thing is the gas gauge. I believe that is working, but I gotta put some more gas in here just to check for sure. Um, I noticed in the process of looking up all this stuff, I noticed that I had an S13 uh, fuel sender in the S14. So that's interesting. I mean, it works. It seems to be simpler than the S14 one anyway, so I'm cool with it. Um, but I might have to put some gas in it just to check and see. But yeah, so that's the wiring for all that. And as of right, as at least as of getting your car running and operating to a normal degree, that's all you really need. You just need to have all that the stuff that I showed you and then the gauge wiring and that's pretty much it. I wonder if the cluster lights work. Yeah, the cluster lights ain't really working, but I don't think I have that wired up. I think that goes to a different circuit. And as of right now, I'm not really too worried about it. But we got what we needed. So it is what it is. Um, I'm going to conclude the video here. And just say like, comment, subscribe, follow the build. And until next time, see where it goes. Got a lot of stuff to do on getting the car to 100% so we can uh, start getting this thing on the road.